Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to teach you how to import customers from an Excel file into QuickBooks Online. So let's get started and let's first uh, dive into where exactly are the customers stored within your QuickBooks file. So we would navigate to the Sales tab on the left-hand side, navigating up at the top in the header by clicking on Customers. Let's dive into one of these customers to see uh, the details. Once you've clicked through the customer, we can select Edit. And um, here we're looking at uh, the different information for a customer. Uh, what's very important is this uh, displayed name as. That has to be unique and no other customer can share the same name. Sometimes the display name will be an actual company name, or if you're working with an individual, it could also be a first and last name person's name. You'll see that we have information down below that we can bring in phone numbers. Um, the email is important for us to set up uh, invoicing online and setting up email invoicing. We need an email to email the invoice to or notes and so forth. If you're looking down the list of customers and you don't recognize somebody in here and you search for it, it's possible that they could have been inactivated. So in order to see that, we would just need to select the little tiny gear and choose include inactive to see that. All right, let me take you now to the actual fields that are permissible to import into QuickBooks Online. These are them right here. Uh, there are 16 fields that you can import, um, no more. Unfortunately, you can't have your own custom fields. Like if I'm keeping track of customers that are signed up on my newsletter list, there's not an opportunity for us to merge uh, those together. So these are the default settings of importing. We need to have for sure their name, and that has to be, a, again, a unique value when you're importing. If it conflicts with another existing customer, we won't be able to import it. It will show that it has a duplicate. We want to have their email and then probably uh, street, city, state, zip. If you don't have the, that information yet, that's okay. You can always manually add it when it comes your way. If you don't keep track of, um, you know, resale numbers, open bounce, just leave those alone. Okay. All right, so um, let me share with you the, uh, the spreadsheet that I am going to import. This is what I would like to bring in. I would like to bring in these customers, and these are all individuals. We don't have any company per se information, but we have a company name. The name will be these right here. So if you look at the sample template, uh, notice that just says name. It doesn't really say first and last at all. So a little trick in Excel that you can do is you can create a new field, call it name, and you'll have the ability to basically join these up together. So if I were to start typing, this is a really cool magic trick I'm going to share with you. Lynn Callahan, John Smith, I'm just gonna hit enter. Now, how did that do that? That's something called Excel Flash Fill, and it will quickly suggest as you're typing, fill it in. Now, you gotta have Excel 2013 or 2016 or later. Excel 2010 does not work. So if I'm in Excel 2010, then I'm gonna just need to use the old-fashioned formula method where I'm selecting the equals, this first cell, ampersand, sorry about that. I uh, hit the wrong button on my keyboard there. I'm going to try that again. Equals B2 ampersand. Here we go. Quote, space, quote, ampersand, last name. That's going to join the first name, a space, and their last name. And that would be another opportunity to bring that in there together. All right, so I could use that as a setting as well. Now, QuickBooks actually can sometimes predict that you have a first and last name together and it will join them together as well. So keep that in mind that sometimes this extra step that I just did might not even be necessary because QuickBooks can pick up on joining them together with concatenating them on the fly. So I want to bring in their emails, 
their names. I won't be able to bring this in at all just for the nature of it. I'm going to share with you, um, I'm going to save this, and then I'm going to share with you the actual QuickBooks sample file. If you were to come in and import customers and download that sample file, uh, this is what it looks like right there. Okay, so name, column A, and as you go forth, you'll see that. All right, so um, we can click Browse. Make a connection to it, then click next in the lower right hand corner. All right, now we're at the step two mapping data. We have the name. Here's what I was just talking about it has automatically put together the first and the last name together. And that was just added up there. But since I did save it, I could also come up here as well and select the names. Company, I'd want to match that if you had that available. I don't have a phone, a mobile, I do have the email. And so basically anything that has a green check mark means it's been mapped. So street, address, city, state, zip, and um, no matches for the rest of those there. So after you verify, then you're going to click next and be very cautious. Uh, one thing you could do is you can test this out on the sample file. <clears throat> first before you do it in your real file. And you can Google uh, test drive QBO to download a sample file in QuickBooks to test it out on here. All right, now, I don't think I like this right here. This formula here is not going to be what I was after. So uh, it's the beauty of doing uh, live demos here is that you get to see mistakes on the fly. So. What I'm going to do is hit the back button. I did not convert that spreadsheet formula to a value. Can import formulas. I'm learning right now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch it back from name to that first and last name there. Okay. Now just real quick in the spreadsheet, what I should have done is I should have selected these right here, copied them, and then pasted the values over top of that. So that way there's no formula linked to it at all. All right, next. And there, much better. Okay, so we've got a check in here. If you see somebody you don't want to import for whatever reason, you can uncheck their row and that will exclude them from the import. And then we're ready to hit import. And here we go. Doesn't take long. You'll see how many you received into the import successfully. Then scroll through by typing their name or searching for them to find them. Once you find that customer, you'll see the address being brought forth. We can click edit. If something does change later down the road, we would edit their email here, for example, or any other data sets that we have here. All right, um, I want to thank everyone for watching this video. You learned how to import customers into QuickBooks Online. For more resources online, you can check out my blog at sequentialsolutions.com forward slash blog, or uh, check out some books that I highly recommend for small business owners at sequ sequentialsolutions.com forward slash books. Till next time, see you later.